Hi, good day. Welcome back to our class. Today, I am going to perform the experiment on the hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbon, by the way, is a group of organic compounds which is composed of the hydrogen and carbon. The hydrocarbons that we are going to use for this certain activity are the following. The cyclohexane, the cyclohexene, and acetylene. Now, we are going to collect the acetylene gas by using this generator. So, this is what we call the acetylene generator. So, I have here in the Erlenmeyer flask the calcium carbide. And this will be reacted by the water inside the separatory funnel. So, I'm going to insert this separatory funnel into the Erlenmeyer flask so that the water from the separatory funnel will drip down the calcium carbide inside the Erlenmeyer flask. And the reaction involved is that the calcium carbide plus the water will form the acetylene gas plus the calcium hydroxide. The acetylene gas that will be issued out passing through this delivery tube will be collected by using the water displacement method. So, I am going to prepare here test tubes. And I'm going to fill them with water so that the water inside this test tube will be displaced by the acetylene gas. We are going to collect here five test tubes of acetylene gas. So we are now going to run down the water from the separatory funnel. So I have already here collected the five test tubes of the acetylene gas. You saw that I collected this by water displacement method. So we are going to submit this acetylene gas to the following test. For the first test, we have the formation of copper acetylene. With one of the acetylene gas, we'll use this, we are going to add this with 5 ml of ammoniacal solution of coprose chloride. So this is the coprose chloride. And we are going to add to this acetylene gas 5 ml. Observe what happens. The next test that we are going to apply to the hydrocarbons is the solubility test and the density test. So as I have said a while ago that the hydrocarbons that we are going to use are the cyclohexane, the cyclohexene, and the acetylene. So we are going to use first the cyclohexane. This is the cyclohexane. I'm going to use six drops of the cyclohexane. So these six drops of the cyclohexane, I'm going to add 3 ml of water. Because we're testing for the solubility of the cyclohexane, so we're going to shake it whether it's soluble in water. Observe what happens. As you can see, there are two layers of the liquid. Now, what, which do you think is the upper layer? Which do you think is the lower layer? Is the upper layer the cyclohexane and the lower layer the water? We have mixed this a while ago and you saw that they are not miscible. So for sure, the upper layer must be the cyclohexane. And because the upper layer is cyclohexane, 
that means that it is lighter than water. Then let's have the cyclohexene. This is the cyclohexene. We are going to use also six drops of the cyclohexene. Let's add 3 ml of water. Let's mix whether it is soluble in water. Observe what happens. Then let's have the acetylene gas. Let's add this with 3 ml of water. Observe what happens. The next test that we are going to apply to these hydrocarbons is the reaction with potassium permanganate. So let's start with the cyclohexane. So with this cyclohexane, I'm going to add this with five drops of the potassium permanganate. I want you to observe what happens. Then we are going to use the cyclohexane. We will use five drops of this. And add the potassium permanganate. Observe what happens. Compare with the cyclohexane. Then with the acetylene gas, we're going also to add this with the potassium permanganate. Observe what happens. The test tube with a violet color is a cyclohexane added with the potassium permanganate. The middle test tube is the cyclohexene added with the potassium permanganate. And the third test tube is the acetylene gas that we collected added with the potassium permanganate. Observe what happens. Compare the three. The next test that we are going to apply to the hydrocarbons is the action of the sulfuric acid. This is the sulfuric acid. So we will use five drops of the cyclohexane. And we are going to add 1 ml of sulfuric acid. Observe what happens. Then we are going to use cyclohexene. Add it with sulfuric acid.
observe what happens. Then we are going to add the acetylene gas with the sulfuric acid. Observe what happens. So I want you to observe the results. We have this test tube contains a cyclohexane together with added with the sulfuric acid. This is the cyclohexane added with the sulfuric acid and this is the acetylene gas added with the sulfuric acid. Observe. The last test that we are going to apply to the hydrocarbons is the addition of bromine in carbon tetrachloride. The first hydrocarbon that we are going to use is the cyclohexane. And we are going to add this with the bromine in carbon tetrachloride. Observe what happens. Then, we are going to add the cyclohexene with bromine in carbon tetrachloride. Observe what happens. Then, the acetylene to be added with bromine in the presence of carbon tetrachloride. And observe what happens. I want you to observe. The first tube is the cyclohexane, we added with the bromine in CCL4 or carbon tetrachloride. The middle test tube contains the cyclohexane, added with bromine in carbon tetrachloride. And the third test tube is the acetylene, added with bromine in carbon tetrachloride. Look at the turbidity of the result in acetylene. That is all for today. I want you to write all the observations and kindly observe also what I did when I performed the activity and please write a formal report about this activity. This is your teacher, Professor Nisitas Ruiz of Holy Name University.